The newly named Visa Cash App RB Formula 1 team are aiming to become a more competitive outfit. No longer the training ground for Red Bull's next superstar, they're looking to work their way up into the top five, but that goal is years away yet. And with Daniel Ricciardo not looking like the competitive star the team wanted him to be, and Yuki Tsunoda likely to move on after this season, what do the team do? I'm George from F1 Reverse, and this is Don't At Me. Normally, we bring you up-to-date news on everything that's going on in Formula 1, but on this show, we get a chance to voice our opinion on the biggest stories happening in the sport. So, don't go anywhere. The current VCarb team were initially established as Toro Rosso back in 2006 and have played host to some of the sport's biggest up-and-coming names during their existence. That first season pairing of Vitantonio Liuzzi and Scott Speed didn't exactly set the racing world on fire, and you can see that I had to read my notes to even remember their names. But when Scott was kicked from the team halfway through their second season and replaced by Sebastian Vettel, things really started happening. Toro Rosso were a machine, pumping out F1 talent quicker than teams could pick them up. Vettel was followed by Ricardo. Ricardo was followed by Verstappen and Sainz, then came Gasly, then came Albon, and now Sonoda seems the most likely to graduate the Red Bull School of Racing drivers. There have been some misses along the way. Um, the Russian torpedo, Daniel Kvyat, he comes to mind. But for the most part, the quality of drivers coming through the junior team has been impressive. Last season, though, Red Bull decided that they wanted that to end. F1 is stupidly expensive to be a part of, and running a team for junior drivers is a massive money pit, and with the team now being run by people who care about money instead of one guy who doesn't, that's a problem. No one wants to spend big money to sponsor a team that are publicly saying, we aren't going to be competitive. Why do you think they got their own clothing brand, Alpha Tauri, to be the title sponsor for three years? It's because no one else would spend enough money to be a title sponsor. They were essentially paying themselves to be in Formula 1. Visa and Cash App would not be paying over $20 million annually to title sponsor a team who weren't even really trying. So, for 2024, this brand new competitive Red Bull team with the big swanky new sponsors need to show they mean business. In steps Daniel Ricciardo, a time race winner, known for his death defying late breaking moves. Beloved by fans, pundits, and public relations people around the world, he looks like a pretty serious signing and a man who has no right being on what is essentially a junior B team. He's competitive, he's exciting, and he looks amazing in marketing material. He's everything a top-tier competitive organization wants, right? Wrong. At the moment, he's just a bit disappointing. Alongside him sits potentially the last of the Red Bull Junior team members. Yuki Tsunoda is, in theory, the last Red Bull Junior driver who will get a place just because Red Bull think he might be okay in Formula 1 but they need some time to assess him, which is what's happened with every other driver who's come into that team. Previously, he hasn't fit the bill for what this rebranded team wants to do. He isn't exciting, he isn't competitive, he is okay and that's about it. But that's changing. Yuki is a driver who has been improving. In his first season back in 2021, Pierre Gasly wiped the floor with him, 110 points to 32. In 2022, things were closer. Gasly won 23 points to Yuki's 12. Admittedly, the RB car was nowhere near as good as it was in 2021, but the gap was much closer. Yuki kind of got more out of it than Gasly did compared to the season before. Then in 2023, Yuki won 17 points to 8 against the three drivers he was paired up with. Now I know it's probably not fair to compare him against a combination of Nick DeVries, Liam Lawson, Daniel Ricciardo who was injured slash coming back from a year away from the sport, but clearly he's done better against his teammates and all he can do is beat the person who's in the garage next to him. This season, he's looked good again, and looking at the current Drivers' Championship table, Daniel Ricciardo needs to be worried. Back-to-back -back points finishes, paired with good qualifying results and a lot less mistakes, is what VCarb wants right now. At the end of this season, though, both drivers are out of contract.
What VCARB do with their driver lineup for 2025 is a complete mystery and a problem that they've got themselves into. In Formula 1, there are four levels of drivers. Number one, you've got those who are the absolute favorites for a world title when they're in the right car. And even when they're not in the right car, you can still expect them to pick up podiums and race wins when they're available. I'm talking about people like Hamilton and Verstappen, drivers who you really expect to perform kind of no matter what car they're in. I'm not talking about putting Verstappen in a Alpine and expecting him to win races, but you think them in any of the top four or five cars, they're going to be able to compete. Number two, you've got the race winners. This is those with the ability to win a race, and they're regularly around that top five, but they're not quite the full package. They're lacking something a little extra. Normally, it's consistency, which stops them from being that like top tier of reliable title challenger. Charles Leclerc is the perfect example, or maybe George Russell. Both of them have a habit of binning it when there's absolutely no reason to, or having great performances when there's no explanation for it. Valtteri Bottas, he's the other side of the coin, uh, a bit less time binning it, a bit more time just being beaten by Hamilton over and over again. They're the drivers who can be great on a good day and they either bin it or they are just terrible on a bad day. There's not that consistency. Then you've got Category 3, the biggest one. These are your midfield regulars. These are drivers who are of Formula 1 quality, but they never really end up in the conversation for moving to a top team. I'm thinking someone like Pierre Gasly or Kevin Magnussen and kind of everything in between there. They're drivers who you don't seriously think, ah, oh, Red Bull have got a space free at the end of the season. I wonder if they go for Kevin Magnussen. <laughs> like, sorry, Kevin, it's just not going to happen. They're good drivers. They might get a podium finish or two over their career. They might even win a race. But it requires something to go wrong at the front for that to happen. Then you've got category number four. These are the drivers who come in for a season or two, obviously aren't up to the standard of the rest of the grid, and then disappear. Antonio Giovinazzi is a perfect example. He was great in junior categories. I think he won the masters of formula 3 he came second in f3 and f2 whatever they were called when he was in them but he's a good quality junior driver he then gets into formula one he has a couple of forgettable years and then he goes and wins the le mans 24 hour these guys are still unbelievable racing drivers but they're not quite in that like top 15 in the world who managed to make a career out of formula one Obviously, there's a few grey areas in there. People kind of go from category to category. People can improve or they can lose form and move down. But in general, you can kind of put everyone on the grid into one of those four spots. Daniel Ricciardo, for example, was in that second category, the race winners category, when he was at Red Bull. He picked up the occasional race win. He was on the podium every now and then. Um, but he just wasn't very consistent at doing it. And even in that first season at Renault, though the car didn't quite match him, he still kind of looked like that driver. Given the right car, in a season without a serious standout favourite, like a turbo hybrid Hamilton or a ground effect Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo might have challenged for a title. And he came third in a couple of seasons behind the two Mercedes cars, but he just wasn't quite that extra step to be a serious contender in either of those seasons. Now, though, he's a Category 4 driver. He's had a couple of seasons where the only notable thing that happened is how bad he's been. And come next year, he'll be driving an IndyCar or NASCAR. And I'm sorry, but the truth hurts. Yuki Tsunoda looked like he was in that bottom category for his first two seasons. And I'm sure, 100% convinced, if Honda hadn't been behind him, Red Bull would have waved goodbye to him after 2022. But now, he looks like the best of the bunch from those bottom five teams. Alex Albon might have something to say, or maybe the, the Alpine drivers might have something to say about that, but with his car at the moment and how he's performed in the first four races this season, Yuki looks like the real deal who could make a career out of Formula 1. I can see a world where Yuki Tsunoda picks up a podium or two driving for someone other than VCarb um, over the next few years. He's kind of got there where he could be that kind of driver. And maybe if Honda managed to lubricate his way into Aston Martin, he could go even further and could get into that race winner's category.
Bar some miraculous turnaround in form from Ricardo, which hasn't happened in the 41 races since he won with McLaren back in 2021, and he has been downhill since then and his form has been bad. He'll be gone from the team by the end of the year, and it doesn't matter how big a piece he was in the bargaining with Visa and Cash App to make that massive deal happen, which people have said he is, he just can't carry on at Formula 1. Sonoda's more complex, though. He's a driver that probably fits the bill perfectly for the new VCAR team. They want drivers who can put in performances, but they need to shake that image of the Red Bull B team before they can attract someone like a Carlos Sainz, who's been cut loose from a top team, who looks to be an extremely good driver and is in need of a seat. VCARB at the moment can't sign anyone in that race winners category, which means they need those category three drivers, those kind of midfield regulars who, given the right circumstances, will pick up big points and may even be able to do a Gasly at Monza in 2022 and win a race, though that was exceptional. Yuki is that driver at the moment. That's kind of the driver that he's showing that he's become. But everything we've heard from Red Bull is that he's not good enough for the main team. And they've been saying that for years now, and that's a problem. Do VCARB commit to their stated aim of being competitive and not a training ground and keep him on? Does Yuki even want to stay, or will this Aston Martin deal come through and he disappears at the end of the season? If he stays, who do they pair him with? Liam Lawson probably has to be in the sport in 2025. His brief but impressive cameo last year kind of did enough that people said, yeah, you know what, he's worth a go, he's worth a look at. But is VCARB just the Red Bull training camp if they do that again? That's not what Visa and Cash App are signed on for. And what happens if Yuki doesn't stay? Do they promote another junior driver? Do we have Ayumu Iwasa or Isaac Hajar alongside Liam Lawson? That's that, that's not what Visa and Cash App signed on for either. They can't have two rookies in their car if they're trying to put forward this image of themselves as not the B team and as more of like a competitive team trying to get out of the midfield. So, maybe does Valtteri Bottas get the call? Either of the Alpine drivers, maybe? I mean, would Pierre Gasly really come back? Kevin Magnussen? Like, what do they do? I can't see an outcome where the lineup of the team matches this vision they're selling. They're promoting themselves as this competitive team, and they've got an ambition to be fighting further up the field. They want to be the next Alpine, but without the massive downturn in form. But there's no way they can get the drivers to match that because of who they are. Performance-wise, the team is improving. And, you know, over the course of the season, they could carry on improving. And considering what's happening at Mercedes, you know, there's potentially points to be taken off them. And if Aston Martin, our racer, isn't matching the car, then there's points to be had there for them as well. But with the gamble on Ricardo failing, and by writing Yuki off from a seat at Red Bull, and therefore putting him off staying at the team any longer, they've kind of left themselves devoid of driver options. And I think I'd actually go as far as saying they're going to have the worst driver lineup on the grid in 2025 because of that. I really hope for their sake that that naming rights deal with Visa and Cash Up is tied up for a good few years, because when they announce that Joe Guan Yu and Liam Lawson are going to be driving for them next year, those sponsors are going to be asking where their marketing material is, and they're going to be wanting their money back. Alright, that was my opinion on the very awkward situation of VCARB. This was Don't At Me, and you've been watching F1 Reverse. I'll see you next time.